As a final comment about the action potential and this section on the propagation of the signal, I want to show you that by using the equations that I've presented in our discussion, it is possible to simulate through computer programs the Hodgkin and Huxley model to follow the evolution of a train of action potentials over time resulting from a current injection. One very cohesive program that I want to present to you is this Python code which neatly summarizes and illustrates very well what I have explained over the course of our discussion. In the description, I've included a link for where this code was posted originally. I've made a few adjustments on my own, but essentially it is the same code. Since this code directly models the Hodgkin and Huxley model, let's use our equivalent circuit model to illustrate the different components of the code. In Python, the code requires these following modules, NumPy, Matplotlib, and odint from scipy.integrate. All right, first, we need to establish some constants in our system. The constants in our system are the capacitance, the maximal open conductance for sodium and potassium, and the equilibrium potentials for potassium, sodium, and the leak channels. The values are shown both in the code and on the circuit. Then, we can establish the equations for the transition rates of each gating variable. In this code, they have decided to use different settings in each equation in comparison to the ones I've presented to you, but it doesn't matter too much because the results are still faithful to the ones of Hodgkin and Huxley. Afterwards, we can establish the equations for the sodium, potassium, and leak currents. The sodium and potassium equations use the modified versions that we've derived from the probability model. Then, to get an expression for the injected current, we must first establish the range of time for which our experiment will last. In this code, we will consider an interval of 450 milliseconds that we will divide in increments of one hundredths. Since we will integrate later, it is good to use a small incremental step. For the injected current, basically what is modeled here is many conditions that will give us intervals of current injection. In the code, we have five intervals. In the first interval from 0 to 100 milliseconds, no conditions are matched, so the injected current returns 0. As the time surpasses 100 milliseconds, the first condition will be met, and a current of 10 microamperes per centimeter square will be sent. Then, after 200 milliseconds, the current will stop due to the second condition. Between the 300 and 400 millisecond interval, the same logic applies, but this time the value of the current goes up to 35 microamperes per centimeter square. Then, after 400 milliseconds, the current is turned off, which gives this general shape of the current injection as a function of time. Now, the next part of our code is to solve the differential equations of our model. The first important differential equation comes from the sum of all currents, in which if we substitute the definitions of the currents with what we've established, we can isolate the derivative of the membrane potential with respect to time. The three other important differential equations are the respective differential equations that describe n, m, and h. To solve these equations, we can use the odint module. For this video not to derail too much into the realm of computer science, I will leave a link in the description on how this module works, but essentially it performs a loop over the time interval we have, and for each small increment, it computes a value at that point. Then, we can collect the values computed by the module into the variables lowercase i and a, lowercase i k, and lowercase i l. Finally, we can make plots of the membrane potential, sodium, potassium, and leak currents, the gating variables, and the ejected current as a function of time, using the commands of matplotlib as shown here. The generated figure of this program is the following and illustrates very well the process of signal propagation, which is the core component that we are studying in our conversation. Thank you for watching this video. If there was anything unclear or there was a mistake somewhere in the video, make sure to let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you can consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. On the right, you will see the informational resources that I've used to produce this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in our next discussion.